Alright, I'm back, and I actually finished this tutorial once and realized that it didn't capture audio. Lovely. So, let's try this again. The paths are now traced out, and before we move on to the crosshair, let's, uh, let's clean things up a bit. First thing I like to do is create a layer group for our text. So if we need to go back and manipulate it, change it, what have you, it's there in its original form. So we can put those all in there. We can even turn them on and then just turn off the layer group. And if we need them, they're there. Let's get rid of the layer boundary. All right. And let's go ahead and merge these together. Since this particular logo doesn't have any this is one color, this is another color, this has a different effect, so on and so forth. There's no reason we can't just merge those paths together and treat it as one entity. So, um, if you hold your shift key, you can turn on and off all layers except for the one that you're on. All these paths we want to merge into one, so make sure they're all visible. And then right click and hit merge visible paths. And now we have one single path that incorporates all of our separate texts. All right. And let's go ahead and save that. Now I created a, a uh, graphics folder and named that logo. Um, I did that in the middle there so you didn't see that. But now that it's saved, we can start to tackle our crosshair. So let's start here. Now there's a couple ways before you do a project like this you want to look at this and see uh, how you want to uh, tackle it. And we've got many ways. We could either draw this out, this cross out as one single path and uh, then add a couple circles. But to save, I'll show you a little trick to save a little time when you don't necessarily need to do that. And so we're going to draw two lines here. And then we'll stroke it later. And the stroke will make this instead of actually having to draw out the path. Um, the one thing about this, though, is since half part of this logo is obscured from the text, let me turn this off. Um, we don't know where to stop over here or down here. Um, now you don't have to do that, um, but I'd rather make the entire logo in case I want to use that, I don't know, for clear art later or anything. It'd be great just to have this whole crosshair as one piece instead of just drawing out what's visible. So the way I'm going to tackle this is I'm going to bring out some guidelines. Oops, I still have my old guidelines and I'm going to delete those. I made a hotkey for f the number four to delete guidelines. So we're going to add some new ones. And bring one down here in the center. Okay. And oh, one more. Let's bring this one in. All right, so I can draw a simple line from here to here and then to make sure it's the right size down here I'll duplicate it and then join those together and then I'll duplicate that and rotate it 90 degrees and then that'll make my cross so I'm going to go to the path tool and luckily it snaps right to where I want it with these guidelines so I'm going to duplicate it and then Turn this off so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to use the control key. So, oops, move and then the control key so I can grab that path and it should snap right into place there. Now, if I turn, oops, I went back too far. Duplicate. There we go. Control and snap into place 
and now we'll merge those two together. Now, when you merge those, it doesn't get rid of any of the original nodes. So, if I turn off those, and I select this new path with my path tool, you'll see it's got those nodes in the middle. That's fine, you can leave those. It bugs my OCD, so I just delete those middle nodes and then close this path that way. Now I have a solid line. Now I'm going to duplicate this again, turn the old one off, and I'm going to rotate that 90 degrees. Now since this is an, an, an enclosed path, it's just a single line, I can't use the trick to select it and then use my manipulation tools. Um, it wants, it's going to want to grab the entire layer since it don't actually have a selection, since there's nothing to select being a single line. So the way I'm going to do this, is I'm going to hit my rotate tool, shift R, you can see it changed up here, and actually before I do that, I'm going to turn my guides back on. There we go. Now shift R. Now to rotate this, grid lines. I'm going to move my center axis as you'll see that's the center of the canvas but I want to rot I don't want to rotate from here I want to rotate from here and as you'll see it'll snap right into place and now I can rotate that line here I can enter 90 degrees there um, but the way I'm going to do it is I'm just going to use my control key and it'll lock it into 15 degree increments. Oops, I lost my center. But you see how it's rotating now on that center axis. When I hit reset, I lost the center. So I'll move that back here, hit the control, and rotate a couple times till I hit 90 degrees. And there we are. Turn off our guides. And there's our cross and we can go ahead and merge that together. So that's one part done. And turn that off. And now we've got our circles to deal with. The thing about the circles is there's two ways you can do this. First I'm going to drag out lines for the edges that we have. Since we can't go over here, we're going to go over here. Go ahead while I'm doing this, get the ones for my inner circle. Now I want to show you two ways to do this. One way is a quick, quick way, and you can use just the ellipse tool and drag out, and if you use your shift key, it'll keep it constrained to a perfect circle. And that's actually not what I wanted to do. what I want to do is I'm going to make this centered because I'm going to stroke that circle as well instead of making a full path. There we go. It should be in the middle. That looks pretty good. Alright, so back E key. I'll bring this out, hit our shift key. Now you see it's centered in that instead of on the edge. Now if you do this, you got your selection and I forgot to notate. When you drag out a selection like this, if you look down here it'll show you the size of it. So one more time and follow along down here. Bring this out and hit my sh oops. Straining to what I already had. You can tell I don't do this very often. All right. Hmm. Well, it doesn't matter because I can just do it this way until it's even. I don't know why 
it's not constraining properly. So it looks like it's about 181 is the proper way or the proper size of that circle that we want to create. Um, that'll be important for the other way I want to show you. So if we go into our paths tool we can actually create a path from a selection and it tries to and, um, do the best it can to make that. If it was square it would make a perfect square with four nodes on the corners and four straight lines. Problem is when it does it on a circle if we look at this turn off the background layer turn off our guides you can see it's not a perfect circle it's got these um, nodes in certain places if we look at it I don't know why it does this and doesn't know that you're making a perfect circle and give you four nodes so anyways it's a quick way to do something if you don't need to be super super accurate I'm definitely too anal and uh, I like to have it perfect so we're gonna scratch that bring up our guides um, let me show you another way to measure when you want to create a circle or something like that and that's using the measurement tool with our guidelines it makes it really easy because we can just click and drag and as you can see it'll measure out from that point but if we use the control key again it'll constrain two 15 degree angles and uh, so we're going to bring it right down to the center and that's going to tell us 90 pixels alright so with that information we can use our shape tool shape paths and let's create a circle so we know the we want half well we want this dimension which was 90 so it should make it uh, I believe that's right it should make it 180 and to find our coordinates if you drag your mouse and look down here let me move this out of the way a little bit anywhere you drag your mouse it'll show you your coordinates so if we just go right to the center of where we want our circle placed you'll see 379 129 379 129 like I said I already finished this tutorial once but you would enter those coordinates here and when we're all set we don't want to stroke it now or anything um, hit OK it won't make it visible by default but there's our circle and now if we look at this circle, get rid of that. That's a perfect circle. Only took four nodes and they're all evenly spaced apart. So that's how I like to create circles in GIMP. It's a couple extra steps, but it's worth it for perfection. Alright, so we're going to repeat this process for the smaller circle. And we'll it shift down. Yep, we'll measure the small, and that is 39 ticks. So, go shape, shape paths, and circle. And our coordinates are the same. Uh, it should be 19.5. Oh, what am I doing? That ain't right. Let's get rid of that. Undoing after you do a shape path will not uh, undo your old path. So you actually need to delete those even though um, you hit the undo. Just good info to have. All right, circle. What did I say? Oh, duh. 39. There we go. All right. So now we actually have all the elements that we need to create our crosshair. Let's get rid of, I can actually just, don't think I need them at all anymore, so I'm going to delete those and get rid of that to make it easy. All right, 
so now we need some some layers it's going to be a few elements here so the first layer I'm going to do that uh, that white background that's semi-transparent and the way to do that is you want to select your path I use shortcut control P it's not the one I wanted but it'll select whichever one you're on or you can use it here as well select path and then we can just drag from our swatches over into it and if you go back here it's on that layer that we created and we just change the opacity it was probably something like that we can uh, tweak it later if we want so now we're going to go on a new path and I'm going to make these red so I can check it against the, the black here otherwise you wouldn't be able to tell the, if the size was correct or such so let's do this cross and what I'm going to do is I'm going to stroke that path like I said before here's the shortcut button to do it um, I use the number 8 <clears throat> and this will bring up your stroke style now the default way is just a solid color you can do patterns you always want to have anti-aliasing on and I did this before so I know it's six here and you should be aware of the line styles so say you want it round say these were rounded tops instead of flat if you hit the rounded and angles will be rounded as well I'll show you what it looks like now you got nice rounded tips but that's not how this one's done so the default line style is just the flat ends and hard corners and we'll do that and there we go we know we got the right size so on here let's do the small circle we can select it here and drag that in there and select and for the big circle we'll stroke that with um, A six pickle six pickle hey six pixel stroke should match the rest and there we go there's our all of our elements and we can turn these off now and we can also turn this off so we can get a good look at it all right so now we know we have the right sizes we can change these to black which there's many ways to do that um, you could lock the transparency just drag that over that's one way to do it Oops. Um, you can use your colorize which is under the color tools and my shortcut is shift C and just drag that to white or black that gives you either um, I usually try not to use that in case you need to modify that layer again it won't let you modify the transparent pixels but I just want to show you a few ways I usually end up just shift C and dragging it to black if it's black or white makes it easy alright so now we have to do this inner part here and it's just a matter of making some selections and then deleting from other layers so we know that the cross takes out part of the circle so I'm gonna select this cross why is my marching ants not coming up ah maybe that was it going on here I'm not seeing it something is amiss hmm slowed up here Ugh. all right now let's try this 
Oh, well, of course, duh. They're just lines, and so there's nothing to select, unlike the circle. Sorry for my hiccup. I had a brain fart there. So the way that we're going to do this to take the cross out of the circle is actually use alpha to selection, which is either available here, or I use the win A combination. Um, and now we're going to select the circle and hit delete. Actually, I'll turn this off so you can see it happen. All right, so now we have that. And now we need to take that circle area out of the cross. And I'll do that with the path. I'll select the path there and delete it out of that. So now when we unselect and put it all back together, now we have our crosshair. And let's uh, drop all these cross... Well, first let's make a new layer from visible. So it puts all those elements together onto a single layer, which is Shift-V or uh, new from visible. You can right-click any layer and do it that way, too. So turn all those off and close that up, turn that on, and I'm going to create a folder group for the crosshair. And I call, if I don't have any effects on the layers, oops, I will always call it RAWs. Come on now. Keep hitting the wrong key. There we go. So I know I can duplicate that layer group later and try different effects so on and so forth just a good habit to get into um, call this crosshair and there we go oops we need to drop these in here though there we go we can actually turn these on and then just turn off the layer group. Okay, so now we need to go ahead and do our text. Now, when I add a layer, I use you can use this here, and then you can pick if you want your foreground, foreground background, white or transparency. Um, I'm almost always doing transparency, so a little shortcut, <coughs> excuse me, is to hold the shift key when you press new layer, and it'll make a new layer of the last whatever you had selected last here. So I leave it on transparency and it makes it real easy to create a new layer. Um, another thing is you may see me drop down um, to create a new layer if I don't want it inside a layer group. If I click a layer group and hit new layer it'll put it as the top layer within side of it which I don't always want to do. So what I'll do is I'll find a, a root level layer like this one and then it'll put it above that alright so just some little tips and tricks now we're going to uh, do our text no fanfare here we're going to select that and make a selection out of it we know it's white and we're going to create another new layer for the stroke and we put it underneath of it and I know from earlier that it is 8 pixels and we want the stroke to be black so you can either hit this here or hit your X key that'll swap your foreground and background colors and 8 is my shortcut for stroke path and I know it was 8 pixels is what we want for our stroke alright and there's the crosshair so that's our basic logo right there and as before, I'm going to create a layer group here. Logo, text, rawls, or logo. I'm going to create a layer group here to keep my rawls in. In case I want to do effects later, I'll just duplicate that and then add whatever effects, but I still have my base images for later. And turn that on, save. And one thing I didn't do new from visit.
visible. And I'll click it here so it'll put it on top. There we go. So now we have our two elements, the text and the crosshair. We have our raws that we can go back and even our raw text that are still maintain their text properties so they can be edited with the text editor. Now that's important because what I'm going to do here is end up resizing this to make it fit for an HD logo on our site. And if you resize this at all, even a pixel, for instance, if I scale it by one pixel, you'll see it renders these all out and now we lose our text properties. So my practice is to make this my original project file and then do everything I need to do and then I'll duplicate it, size it, and usually add effects <clears throat> later. Or I can do it here, it doesn't matter, but I keep two separate files, one of the original size and one um, just for HD logo size. So let's create visible with both elements and to size this properly oops actually I'm going to duplicate it first so this will be my I'm going to save it just like that and this will be my original file which I can always return to as you can see I already finished it here in an earlier tutorial without sound so control D will duplicate it and we have a whole new identical project file. See it's untitled up here. So now we can size this and make it work for an HD logo. And the way we're going to do that, everything is, we're going to turn that off. I'm going to collapse these layer groups. And what I'm going to do is auto crop this layer. Or actually I'm going to auto crop the entire image is what I'm going to do. Um, to our logo so we have no space on the outside of it. So I use A is auto crop image for me. And now we can see the true size of the logo is 478 by 299. Um, to be within our bounds for the site it needs to be either 780 pixels wide or 290 so we're tall. So we're 9 pixels too tall. So we'll go ahead and scale the whole image to 290. Make sure your aspect ratio is locked. Hit scale. And now the logo is the proper size for the site. Uh, so let's go ahead and make our canvas the proper size, which is 800 pixels wide, 310 pixels tall. Don't forget to hit your center key, and you won't have to do any alignment later. And there's your basic logo. Now when we resize we screwed up our background layer so we're just going to delete those and add them back and they'll be at the right size. So and I don't need this visible now. I just use that for sizing. And now we have our two elements here. But I'm going to take it one step further and I'm just going to add a little effect to the text. So I'm going to get rid of that visible as well. Go in here I'm going to duplicate this layer, Control shift d or right-click duplicate layer. Bring that out here to work with. And I could have just duplicated the whole layer group, but I didn't. All right. So I want to add a little bump level to just the white text. And that's why I installed a filter at the beginning, um, a script, excuse me at the beginning so we'd have it and it's called bevel selection I always have it hot keyed to 2 and since it works on a selection it won't do anything since I haven't selected anything so I'm going to cancel and what I'm going to do is select that which is win A or alpha to selection here um, I'm actually going to just turn off viewing it for now so I can watch the effect happen bring this back up. I don't want to work on a copy. I don't need to keep the bump layer and for this 
I believe the default is smooth, but I've turned it off. It's remembering my settings when I did it before. Um, I'm going to try a four pixel uh, bevel. All right. Just very subtle, but it, what it does is it adds a little depth to the letters. And if you look at it against a white background, oops, you can see. Now, if, if I just use the raw white text, of course, you can't see anything. So we'll turn that off. So that's all I did. I just bumped it up just a hair. There's our stroke. And here's our crosshair. And actually, the crosshair goes underneath. And let's look at it. I think the transparency looks good. And the one thing you'll notice is the very tips and the outer circle kind of disappear on black. In some logos, this would definitely be a problem. In this, you don't lose the fact that this is a crosshair. And I don't think you, I personally don't want to add uh, a white outline to it. I just think it takes away from it and we don't lose the true element of the logo but it would be easy enough to use a layer effect um, there's a million ways to accomplish a, a nice little white outline or a glow um, but I'm not doing it I just don't think it's needed here um, if it is integral integral to the logo that it must be there then please take the time to give it some sort of stroke, glow, outline, so on and so forth. So the last things I want to do is I want to add some drop shadow here. And what I can do here first is now that I have my bump text, I'm going to create a new layer with the stroke and the bump text as one. And I'm going to delete those other two. So now I have my two main elements I want to work with. And I'm going to give them each a drop shadow and I'm doing them separately because I want the drop shadow from the text to overlay on top of the crosshair so it brings it more to the front and the crosshair in the back otherwise if I did a drop shadow of all this at once um, I just don't think it'll look as good so shift 3 is my drop shadow otherwise found under light and shadow filters, light and shadow, drop shadow. So this is the defaults that it's going to come at. Um, the problem is, and I'm going to leave allow resizing on there, you should probably do this till you get the, get the hang of sizing your drop shadows. So if we hit the defaults here, as you see it made, it made the image bigger to accommodate the size of the drop shadow and if we didn't have that on you would have cropped your drop shadow for instance if I do not allow resizing it actually made the same drop shadow but let's do this and zoom in and now it's cropped it's hard to see with such a hard blur but it is it goes right to the edge and it will have a hard edge so we don't want any crop drop shadows or glows or anything else on a logo. Everything must be contained within the canvas. So uh, let's go back here and delete this drop shadow. Oh, and I noticed right here that my drop shadow is above and not below the layer. And the reason is is I forgot to turn off or turn off my selection that I made earlier I just made it invisible so it's making a drop shadow whenever you have something selected and hit drop shadow it'll put it on top and go around it so I'm going to unselect that delete this drop shadow and we'll start from scratch so we know we have a 10 pixel gutter around our logo so any combination between your offset and your blur should equal 10 or less and in this case I'm going to go ahead and just use a blur of 6 and keep the offset at the default of 4 X which is this plane and Y which is this you can also use negative numbers um, to make the drop shadow say go this way um, so anyway there we go now you'll see that the drop shadow overhangs the crosshair 
a little bit and it pushes it out in front of the crosshair and I'm going to actually repeat the same drop shadow and I can since it was the last filter I used and I don't need to adjust the settings I can use my shortcut for uh, repeat filter um, repeat drop shadow control F so these are really handy shortcut keys and control shift F will bring up your last filter so if you want to make a different setting you don't have to hunt down the filter again but I'm using the same setting so I'm going to hit control F and it added a nice little drop shadow to the crosshair and lo and behold we are pretty much done to finish up what I'll do is to take all the elements that create my my logo and I'll create one layer of just the logo so now that's my logo HD that's what I'll be submitting if I submitted this that's what I would submit to FanArt TV and turn that off and if you hit control shift E or go to the file menu export this is where you can export your ping so the first thing I'm gonna do and I'll, I'll show you instead of having it untitled there what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save this since this is a totally different project file and I would name it as you can see I already did it earlier but the one that I want to that is sized correctly and not the original I name it HD so I'm gonna go ahead and overwrite the one I did earlier but once you've named this duplicate project file yes I'm gonna replace that now when you go to export it'll put the project file name at the beginning so you don't even have to type that in unless you want to name it something different ping is right we want our transparency so we can export that and now our logo is done finished and we can check it out on the other backgrounds I think it looks pretty darn good it's pretty simple but looks pretty slick nonetheless alright let's really hope this caught the audio this time and I hope you learned something I'm sorry it was so long but it was kind of a big big project and uh, before I go I want to give a shout out to Aries and shimmy 2k from the site they're Photoshop users but we'll forgive them they're still good people alright if you have any questions or suggestions for other tutorials please chime in on the forums and until next time I'll see you then. Bye-bye.